The two weeks of people dressing up in ridiculous gimmicks, thrusting sweets in your face, and courting your vote are over. For seven lucky, or perhaps unlucky people, those two weeks paid off. We'll be talking to one of them, our new president-elect, later in the show. Welcome to the Sunday edition. The headlines this week. An American soldier accused of killing 16 Afghan citizens acted alone, according to US officials. The Pentagon said that the killings were tragic, but insisted it was an isolated incident. A judge ruled that a paralyzed man who wants a doctor to be able to lawfully end his life can proceed with his right to die case. On Tuesday, former News International Chief Executive Rebecca Brooks was arrested as part of the police inquiry into allegations of phone hacking. Five men were also detained, including Mrs. Brooks' husband. David Cameron announced that the public want an end game to the war in Afghanistan as he held talks with Barack Obama on his official visit to the US. A coach carrying 52 people back to Belgium struck a wall head-on in a tunnel in Switzerland. 22 children and six adults were killed in Wednesday's crash. The Fitch Credit Rating Agency joined Moody's and put the UK's top AAA rating on a negative outlook. It was revealed on Thursday that official documents showed Margaret Thatcher was told that a senior Merseyside police officer blamed drunken Liverpool fans for the Hillsborough disaster. The US announced that it remains committed to Afghan conciliation despite the suspension of talks by the Taliban. Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr Rowan Williams, announced he is to stand down from the post in December. He will take the position of Master of Magdalen College at the University of Cambridge. A Turkish army Sikorsi helicopter crash-landed on a house in the Afghan capital of Kabul on Friday, killing at least 12 Turkish soldiers and two children. In Guild and University news this week, David Franklin was elected as President of the Guild of Students for 2012 to 2013. The vice presidents elected for next year are Leander Jones, Simon Furse, Catherine East, James Hughes, Oli Cosentino and James Robertson. Simon Furse, vice president of education elect, and Ed Bauer, current vice president of education, were ejected from the Bullring shopping centre on Wednesday after briefly occupying the Vodafone store. Those were this week's headlines. And now, over to Owen. Thank you, Freddie. Joining us now to talk about Thursday's Guild Council and reflect upon the election fortnight are two of Red Brick's news editors, Karina Gray and Patrick McGree. Karina and Patrick, welcome. Hello. Hello. First of all, we'll talk about Guild Council. Um, so there was a lot of debate on Thursday night. Patrick, what was your highlight of the night? I think uh, my highlight was something that ran through the entire event, which was to see a lot of conclusions being applied to a lot of issues that have been going on throughout the uh, academic year. Um, various things that Redbrick's been reporting on were kind of tied up or concluded or uh, a lot of discussion. And it was also refreshing to see uh, a lot of motions pass relatively quickly with quite a lot of agreement. Mm. Karina, your highlight? Um, well, my highlight's got to be um, the women walking out um, in protest after the censure for Zuki and Tim. Um, obviously, that was quite interesting, but quite, quite a controversial move in some respects. Yeah. So we'll talk about the uh, censure against um, the Vice President of Housing and Community and the Vice President of Sport. Um, obviously, the, the comment was uh, made outside the library uh, yeah. regarding uh, the candidates for women's officer. Um, do you think it was a careless slip or was it a genuinely offen an offensive remark? Um, I think it was a bit of both, really. It was obviously um, an offensive remark. People took it. Um, in an offensive way, and that's fair enough. But at the same time, you know, you, ha you have to remember that they were, were just overheard. However, I do, I do think, it, as they have a role as sabbatical officers, they have a responsibility, particularly when they're on campus, um, to promote the views of the Guild. Um, so, yeah, I do believe that they should have been censored for what they said. Cool. And so uh, the Israel-Palestine debate uh, almost came came to Guild Council last night, um, the issue regarding bins on campus, 
uh, which made by a company which is involved in questionable practices um, in the occupied te territory. Um, do you think that the no policy policy was breached by the passing of the motion which called for the ending of the contracts, Patrick? Uh, I think that's a very difficult issue, and of course, I think that was uh, illustrated very well by the debate, which was one of the longer debates uh, during uh, Guild Council on Thursday. Um, in terms of whether or not it breached the no policy policy, um, it, again, it's, it's very difficult to say. I think that um, perhaps there should be a similar sort of policy regarding how the university and the Guild deal with uh, uh, companies that are alleged to have committed human rights abuses. There should be a similar sort of blanket ban, if possible, on those sorts of issues, just as there is a blanket no policy on the uh, Israeli-Palestine issue, but of course that's the kind of disagreement we saw uh, on Thursday. I think one of the problems is that you've got, it's such a contentious issue mm. that you, almost no matter what you do, you're almost going to offend someone, and it's, it's very difficult to strike that balance. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that balance was quite met in Guild Council last night, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, well, Guild Council in general, there wasn't a great uh, attendance last night, only two-thirds of the chamber was there. Do you have any comment on this? I mean, I was, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, I, I think uh, attendance was uh, lacking, and, it is, and it, I suppose to, for some people that probably is concerning when you consider uh, that these are the people who are supposed to represent everyone. I think one of the uh, vice presidents said uh, that collectively that group is supposed to represent the entire university. So it is concerning when not everyone turns up. Maybe it's something that uh, the officer for um, accessibility, or uh, sorry, Claire Lister, or so yeah. someone would have to uh, look mm -hmm. into because maybe it's not as simple as people not wanting to turn up. Maybe there are things impeding people from showing up. So I think we've got to be very careful not to criticize mm -hmm. uh, that issue before we understand exactly why it is the case. Something that really concerned me um, was that a lot of those people who were there seem to be watching YouTube videos on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Twitter, that sort of thing, not really engaging properly yeah. with the debate. It was only a debate between probably 20 of the people mm. who were there. And it just sort of seems, if you are an elected guild councillor, why are you on Facebook or watching yeah. YouTube videos throughout probably the, the most serious democratic procedure in the whole of the guild? This is something that really annoyed me because from our seats at the back of the chamber we could see people flicking through their friends holiday snaps on mm. Facebook mm. or um, replying to some thread message on Facebook chat, things like that. And you know, there's only five guild councils in a year mm. and they're elected for simply one year and their most important job is to represent the views of their constituents at these like five meetings. They can go on Facebook any other night of the term, so I just yeah. don't understand yeah. it. Personally. Also, there didn't seem to be a huge presence or any kind of deal made out of the fact that we had quite a few of the new, newly elected sabbaticals there. Uh, yeah. Do you think that was an issue? Yeah, that, that was strange. I just assumed, obviously I don't know the reasons why they couldn't attend, there might have been good reasons, but I did think it was quite strange that they wouldn't want to see the role they'll be carrying out next mm. year. Um, obviously there was a few there. But some of them are guild councillors, I know, so they probably know how it works. But I just assumed that they'd want to be there and to air their views now they are going to be sabbatical officers officially. I think also the fact that no attention, was sort of none of the um, current sabbatical team stood up and said, oh yes, well done to my predecessor, or anything like yeah. that. It, there's none of yeah. um, Talking about the elections, we'll, we'll uh, reflect on the election fortnight. Um, from a media perspective, how do you think the fortnight went? Um, personally, I thought that we made big steps towards, well, us, GTV and Burn FM, um, made big steps towards um, getting the coverage to be really comprehensive, um, really fair, which I think is obviously so important. Um, and, you know, I hope that we helped to make the voter turn out that little bit more, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. but who knows. Uh, yeah, I'll reiterate all of that. I think our coverage was... Uh fair as you say that's probably the most important thing I think I hope we were able to inform people about what um, yeah. some of the issues around this were uh, I think our uh, election roundup page that we did every week was kind of a good summary of what had gone on that week uh, and hopefully it, it, had a, it had a good effect but uh, it was certainly very enjoyable to do yeah definitely <coughs> reflecting on the the team the new team uh, how do you think the politics of the team will play out over the next year well I've been thinking a bit about this and Personally, I think the main issue, politics aside, for this year's team was the simple fact that they couldn't all get on and work together. Um, and, you know, we hear so many stories of them not being able to get things done. But there are obviously some massive, like some big friendships in the sabbatical team. Like, for example, Suki and Luke. And I think 
they work together really well and that, that allows them to get so much more done. Um, so I really hope that next year's team can put aside politics and they're all at the end of the day working for the same cause. They all want a better Guild of Students which better represents the student body. Um, so I hope they can all work together and deliver that. Really. Uh, again, I, w I would agree with a lot of that. I would just add that um, while that is often the case, I think we shouldn't rule out debate and discussion. Obviously, yeah. no one would. But I think uh, a lot of arguments are worth having. And if there's going to be division and disagreement, then um, may maybe that could be a good thing. I think we have an article this week in Redbrick in the comment and feature section arguing exactly that case, um, that the polemic is very important to hashing out issues. And you're not going to get anywhere without some disagreement. But obviously, I think we need a, a united team. I think, and I think there's a, a key difference, though, between yeah. sort of disagreement, which I think is great. I think, you know, if they all agreed, I think it would be a very boring, sad team. Yeah. Mm. Um, I also think, though, that if it's going to be as divided as this year, they're not going to get things. Oh, absolutely. That, that, that's what, when, I, when I say it, I, I totally, I totally I agree. I think they just that's need to put thing. aside, yeah. Yeah. once you know, they've finished a debate on a certain thing, they need to put that aside and move on and yeah, been try a lot to work of, together lot of again. Sort of long, drawn out yeah. things over three or four months. That, that's what I mean about Guild Council having sewn up a few of those issues that yeah. have been kind of left open for yeah. quite a while. It's good. So, yeah, no, I, I totally yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. Karina Gray and Patrick Rie, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. He's a politics and international relations second year from Leeds, and just over a week ago, he won the presidency of the Guild of Students. David Franklin, welcome. Hi there. First of all, I should probably ask, how are you feeling? Exceptionally tired. <laughs> um, it's been a week now, and uh, we're just getting back to normal, and normal sleep patterns, normal food, but absolutely on top of the world. It's been a very strange week. Yeah. And the campaigning obviously took a lot out of the candidates to the extent where you fainted. Um, and given the general negative attitude on campus for the elections, do you think that the election fortnight should be reduced to one week? This is something that every single candidate um, was talking about and we agreed. We, we've talked about putting a petition together um, and I know that myself and Leander are going to talk about this next year. Um, there are changes we can make. Um, we're thinking about all sorts of ideas, maybe having more online only campaigning. Uh, banning cardboard is something we're thinking of, um, definitely reducing the time. But all these things are going to affect turnout, voter apathy, um, and I don't think we can predict those things. So there's going to be a lot of discussion, we'll see. Now, one of your campaign ideas was a better library, um, which included uh, two things, uh, longer loan allowances and fairer fines. Now, you didn't promise in your manifesto to reduce fines but to stop unfair rules like holiday recalls and double figure fines however the sources of these are sources of revenue for the library so where will the money come from to allow longer loan allowances okay um, the key focuses in my library policies are to increase uh, the number of books that students are allowed um, currently we're at 12 which is the lowest amongst comparable universities um, and in terms of fines, like, yeah, I can't promise to reduce fines. Um, and what I'm hoping to do is introduce a cap on fines. Mm. These are negotiations that are going to have to happen with the university um, because these revenues clearly get reinvested back into the library and into other services. Um, I couldn't um, say for sure how this is going to work. Um, but I'm hoping that some of these shock stories that we've heard of won't happen, happen again. Now, you're chair of the Liberal Democrat Society. Um, will you be revoking your membership of the party? I won't be revoking my membership of the party. Um, Why not? Because I don't think that there should be a crossover between what I do at university and in student politics and what my ideological beliefs or commitments are um, outside of the university. Um, I retain voting rights um, at Liberal Democrat Federal Conference, which actually means that when uh, the party meets, and as they'll do so in Brighton um, at the start of uh, next year, um, I can impact in my own way upon government policy, yeah. which I think is a good position to be in, particularly as a lobbyist for student issues. Okay, but do you think a person's politics will affect how they run a student reunion? Like, the, the role of a sabbatical officer is, yes, it is to be partisan, but not, perhaps not partisan in terms of general politics, like general national politics. It's, this is not an issue. I don't see it as an issue at all. I didn't run as a Liberal Democrat. I think if I had done, the uh, result might have been very different. Mm. Um, and 
my ideological base is part of who I am. Um, and even within the Liberal Democrat Party, for example, there's a massive disparity of opinion. Um, certainly the grassroots and the leadership are very different from each other. And I just can't see that impacting at all upon my role here. And one such recent policy or idea from the Liberal Democrats was to make students pay council tax. Do you agree with this? Um, no, not at all. In fact, I spoke this week with uh, one of the local city councillors um, about taking away council tax for PhD students on write-up status. Um, and that's something that's going to go higher up. Um, I know the NUS are now lobbying for this as well. Um, we absolutely we shouldn't, we shouldn't. And, you know, by virtue of being a Lib Dem, does that mean I agree with tuition fees? No. Um, so to assign me labels uh, would be inappropriate. Okay. Um, so you're now obviously counting down the days until you're in the office. Um, what are you looking forward to most about it? It's going to be an interesting one. I really just want to get my book fair going, yeah. to be honest. Um, no, there's, there's more to the job. Um, with all the different committees and things I'm going to be sitting on and the influence that I'm going to have, I just hope that I'm able to stand up for um, students and even the little issues that we have, because that's what my manifesto sort of focused on was the little everyday issues. Um, and by virtue of being the position I'll be in, um, I'm really excited that I can uh, act upon those. And equally, um, I was very heavily involved in the petition for uh, the new library design. Yeah. That's something I'll be able to impact. That'll be a bit of a labour of love for me. Um, I just can't wait to get going. What do you think about the politics of the new team? There's a massive um, variation of, of views, personalities, styles. The dynamic is something that will form over time. Uh, we're already talking to each other about ideas and things that we might put together. I think if our passions and energies are channeled um, correctly, we're going to have a really progressive, really productive team. And I honestly can't wait to work with them. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, sir. David Franklin, thank you very much for being on the show. Pleasure, thank you. Join us again for more cutting-edge political chat on the Sunday edition. Goodbye. <laughs>